Let's compare some details between Internet Computer and Solana. Today is May 22nd, 2024 at about 8.08 .08 p.m. Pacific time. Solana, as listed at coinmarketcap.com, currently has a market cap of a bit over $80 billion, $100 million. Circulating supply of about 449 million soul and a total supply of about 576 million and an infinite max supply. Souls available on pretty much everywhere. You know, you can go to just about any centralized exchange and quite a few decentralized exchanges to pick up Solana. Heading over to Solana.com, they say powerful for developers, fast for everyone, bring blockchain to the people. Solana supports experience for power users, new consumers, and everyone in between. And just some of the partnerships that Solana has, you'll see that they list Circle, Discord, Google Jump, Magic, Eden, Meta, Shopify, and Stripe. Solana has over 340 million NFTs minted. I wonder how many of them are actually on chain and how many of them have any actual utility. Made for mass adoption. Now you'll see here under the section heading for fast, you'll see that at Solana.com, they're saying 2,613 transactions per second. And I want you to remember this because depending on where you look up this information and when it was posted, the numbers differ pretty drastically. And this isn't just a Solana thing, by the way. This tends to be a cryptocurrency industry thing. One reason is transactions per second. It, it also depends on what types of transactions are being accounted for. And again, you see talks about use case, either projects built on Solana or partners. Again, mention Shopify down here below, which that is, in my opinion, a pretty bullish partnership to have. Oftentimes when you do even a bit of research, say like even just a couple hours of research on a crypto project, you might be surprised some of the things that you come across. So something that is posted at Solana.com, if we scroll down, you know, they're, they're talking about a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to go into most of it, but you scroll down and you'll, you'll see that they'll talk about the uptime. I haven't fact checked this, but I know Solana has had some issues and they'll, they'll show here that they had nearly 3% downtime in February 2023. And when you scroll down further, what's even more interesting here is the ratio of voting to non-voting transactions. Voting's governance, not, not transactions that people using the blockchain are actually making. And you'll see here that they're saying that the non-voting transactions are the significant minority. Further down here in the Coin Codex article, Solana TPS, how many transactions per second can Solana handle? Theoretically, up to 710,000 transactions per second. However, they actually achieved, or at least claimed to have achieved, 65,000 during testing. Now, this screenshot here is actually from an article over at Solana Compass, which is here. This is the raw TPS, and you'll see that according to this information, they're not hitting five or 10 or 50,000 transactions, even in the raw TPS. Now, if we look at votes versus non-votes, so it appears that the majority of these are voting transactions and the minority are what people would generally consider real transactions like usage of the blockchain. We'll see here that the success rate, well, it's under 80%, which means means that there's greater than a 20% failure rate most of the time, according to this information within the past hour. Now, let's look at non-votes or non-voting transactions. We'll see here that they're basically registering within the last hour up to around a thousand transactions per second. The vote transactions. 12 minutes ago, there was over 2,000 voting transactions. And here we see soulscan.io slash analytics. And again, this is for Solana Analytics. And within the last seven days, we're looking at transactions hovering around 2,000 per second with around 80% success rate, which means around 20% fail rate. Okay, another article this time from Pontum medium.com a detailed guide to blockchain speed tps versus time to finality and they're talking about solana aptos phantom avalanche but if we scroll down through this article we'll come across for instance this chart and on this chart it shows 
Solana has a current TPS of about 2000, which is what some of the other information that we've seen has listed it as. And this particular chart actually lists internet computer. Many, many people don't actually include internet computer in lists like this, but we'll see that internet computer is listed as 3000 current TPS. Time to finality for Solana, two to 46 seconds. Internet computer, one to two seconds. Here's an article about blockchain speeds. What is TPS over at tangium.com? And if we scroll down, we'll see that they list the fastest cryptocurrencies and they don't even list internet computer at all, as well as a number of others, to be fair. And they list Solana as up to 60,000 transactions, average transactions per second, which, you know, they do list a theoretical limit of 710,000 and have tested at 65,000, but real world, nowhere near 60,000 transactions per second. Yet another article from Coin Codex, and we scroll down and we see this chart where they say the theoretical TPS of Solana, 65,000, internet computer, 11,500, live TPS, 2100 if you include voting transactions 980 if you exclude vote transactions internet computer about 6000 if we scroll down further you'll see that currently the solana blockchain is processing just over 2000 transactions per second on average However, this metric also includes vote transactions, which some don't consider as real transactions. I wonder why. If we exclude these transactions, Solana is processing just under 1,000 transactions per second on average in real world conditions, not to mention about a 20% fail rate. Scrolling down further, Internet computer. In its current configuration, the internet computer platform can handle about 11,500 transactions per second. In theory, in practice, the internet computer is handling roughly 6,000 transactions per second at the time of this article. In other words, according to this source, about six times more than Solana. Transactions on the internet computer platform have fast finality. Subnets dedicated to decentralized applications can achieve finality in about one second, with the fin while the finality for NNS is about two seconds. And then fees are also pretty low. Solana is pretty cheap. Internet computer is even cheaper. Who would have imagined? So here's an article from CryptoPotato.com. 25 fastest blockchain networks revealed Bitcoin and Ethereum not in top 15. This is from May 19th, 2024. We scroll down and they're referencing Coin Gecko here. And from that information, Solana, 1,054 TPS and doesn't even bother to list internet computer. Go down to this chart and it just gives you a graphical representation of the same thing. A little over a thousand transactions for Solana, internet computer not even listed. If we take a look at some information from chainspec.app, Solana, real-time TPS, 900 transactions per second. What are they calling real-time TPS? Only transactions with economic value are included. System transactions together with transactions needed to reach consensus are excluded. And once again, they don't bother to list internet computer, probably because it's going to be right at the top. Okay, so now having gone through all of that, I didn't just come to the internet computer wiki first because it's easily dismissible by people, right? They're just gonna say, well, they're biased. You know, they're, they're fudding the numbers. They're fudging the numbers. They just wanna make themselves look way better. Well, I just showed you a bunch of other sources some of which actually show internet computer as well as Solana. And internet computer pretty much always beats Solana when it comes to speed. I didn't just make this up. I showed you the web addresses by, by actually showing the address bar in many of the pages that I was showing. So here at the internet computer wiki, ICP, average TPS, 3200, which they're saying are update calls, meaning not governance. Average finality, 1.4 seconds. And here's something we haven't even touched on yet. On-chain storage cost, one gigabyte per annum. In other words, one gigabyte per year, $5.35. That's on-chain storage. Solana, 
35,000, almost $36,000 to store a gigabyte of data. And then as far as average TPS, 700 if you're talking about non-voting. Let's talk a little bit about Internet Computer. Internet Computer is a cryptocurrency blockchain technology. Internet Computer is a project that was created by the Definity Foundation, and the Definity Foundation was founded by Dominic Williams. And here we see Dominic Williams listed as one of the Definity team members. And when it comes to the Definity team, it's also worth mentioning that they have 270 plus team members. Those team members have over 1,600 publications, 100,000 citations, and more than 250 patents between them. And to more finely hone the point, if we were to filter just by their R&D team, which is research and development, we then see all 82 team members listed who are a member of the research and development team. Internet Computer offers on-chain storage at a cost of $5 per gigabyte per year, which is shown on their homepage up in the upper right hand corner here. And really kind of the vision of internet computer is that they want to replace most of the world's current software with software being ran from a smart contract, which is actually something that internet computer refers to as a canister. The internet computer blockchain offers compute power as well as storage. And recently an LLM AI was demonstrated as running 100% on chain with internet computer. With internet computer, you can actually call upon resources in web two, as well as resources in other web three projects. Internet computer is controlled by a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. Internet computer is in theory, infinitely scalable by simply building more and more subnets, which is not the same thing as sharding. The hardware that is required to set up a internet computer node costs in excess of $10,000. We're talking about enterprise grade servers. And this is also why internet computer is able to provide compute power. Internet computer also offers a reverse gas fee model wherein developers pay the gas fee and thereby making it a lot easier for mass adoption by retail investors and retail users in particular. Internet computer smart contracts or canisters are able to serve web assets directly to web 2. Just to give you an idea of the hardware being used for an internet computer node, we have the generation 2.3 specifications here, looking at about half a terabyte of RAM, over 30 terabytes of storage space. And you can see here, dual socket AMD Epic Milan CPU is recommended. This is where the compute power is coming from on the nodes is because these are very beefy machines. And those nodes might be getting even more powerful in the not too distant future as there are discussions about possibly including GPUs in an upcoming iteration of the node specifications. Internet computer utilizes chain key cryptography, which encompasses a number of things which we are not going to cover in in their entirety at this time. However, one of the noteworthy takeaways here is that each subnet on internet computer, in order to approve of a transaction or an action through chain key cryptography, each subnet only needs to reach a threshold of two thirds of the nodes before something is approved and processed. Another feature of internet computer is CKBTC, which is chain key Bitcoin. CKBTC C is not bridged and it is not wrapped. CKBTC is a direct link between the Bitcoin network and the internet computer, thus reducing the risks tied to bridges. CKBTC also offers the first bona fide use case for bringing smart contracts to BTC. And we can see some of the concerns or problems that this seeks to address, such as the lack of programmability on the Bitcoin blockchain which not everyone would agree is actually a problem, as well as other points like limited integration with DeFi, addressing high latency and fees on the Bitcoin network, and security concerns.
concerns with bridges. Similar to CKBTC, Internet Computer also offers CKETH or chain key ETH. Some of the advantages to developers to use CKETH would include things like lower transaction fees, the ability to manage an Ethereum wallet directly in an ICP canister, seamless conversion, multi-chain environment support, gasless token swaps, and Web2 integration. Because ICP canister smart contracts can call into Ethereum smart contracts, it enables a true world computer in a multi-chain environment. Smart contracts can seamlessly communicate across blockchains. ICP already integrates with the Bitcoin network and native ETH integration is underway. As far as internet computer tokenomics at Genesis, which was in May of 2021, the total supply was 469 million. The circulating supply was 123 million. As of March 14th, 2024, the total supply is 515 million and the circulating supply is now up to 460 million, which is about 89% of the total supply, of which there is 243.8 million staked, which is about 47.2% of the total supply. As we can see here at Crypto Rank, there are some unlocks coming ahead, but they're not particularly massive unlocks. We're looking at less than 1% of the total supply being released each month, which hovers pretty close to about half of a percent being released each month. Internet computer includes both deflationary and inflationary mechanisms. Governance participants can convert voting rewards to newly minted ICP. Also, node providers receive rewards in the form of newly minted ICP tokens. On the other hand, ICP is converted to cycles in other words, burned, in order to pay for computation and storage, which is depicted in the picture shown on screen. The deflationary mechanism, or burn, is through burning cycles. In order to get cycles, you have to convert ICP into cycles, and then cycles are burned for storage, messaging, and execution. As previously mentioned, Internet Computer does offer a reverse gas model, which is very important for users experience. You don't want people that have no idea what crypto is to have to set up crypto wallets and buy crypto in order to pay gas fees, in order to use crypto-based applications or make crypto transactions. That's not the way to encourage mass adoption. Computation and storage would be paid for by ICP smart contracts, in other words, the developers. And there is the option to add a user-based gas fee. Unlike with blockchains like Ethereum, it's not just built into the structure of the blockchain to force users to pay gas fees. Also, the gas fees on internet computer are a lot cheaper than gas fees on Ethereum. As far as speed, in particular TPS or transactions per second, it really depends on where you get your information. In some cases, Definity themselves, which is where this is from, will actually tell you that internet computer has an 11,000 500 TPS. I've seen other sources where they say that that 11,500 is an accurate theoretical limit, but in actual practice today, it's more like six or 7,000 TPS, which make no mistake, that's still faster than most, if not all other blockchains. Here, we see that internet computer is listed as a limitless TPS. And that is based on the concept that you can continue to scale internet computer by building out more and more subnets and bringing more and more nodes online. Definity also points out that smart contracts or canisters on internet computer can serve web or HTTP requests, whereas most other blockchains cannot do that. You can use internet computer without requiring internet computer tokens, which are the ICP tokens. Internet computer offers infinite scaling. And as far as the number or percentage of blockchain nodes in the cloud, internet computer says that they have 0% in the cloud, whereas Ethereum, for instance, many of theirs are hosted by Web 2.0, such as AWS, which is Amazon. As far as the cost of storing data on chain, I have seen all kinds of figures and really they're all extremely high. So it doesn't really matter if it costs you $10,000 per gigabyte or a million dollars or $5 million. 
any of those price points are just ridiculous. And in the case of Ethereum, I, I've seen anything from something like 50,000 to three, 400,000 to two, three million, five million. Here they're saying 350 million. And then even Solana is substantially more to host data on chain. Although to be fair, neither Ethereum nor Solana were designed to host data on chain, which is kind of interesting if you're trying to build a Web3. And here's just a few other data points that just gives you a basis of comparison. So when it comes to validators, Ethereum, very decentralized and has over 500,000 validators, according to this source. The BNB chain is very centralized with only around 40 validators. Solana being moderately decentralized and has over 2,000 validators. Avalanche, moderately decentralized, 1,200 validators. Internet computer listed as moderately decentralized. Unlimited nodes capabilities has over 1,200 validators. The point is this just gives you some idea for comparison's sake. And then as far as data storage, you know, Ethereum, costing an estimated $79 million annually. However, it doesn't say what it's storing or how much data that is. So I'm not sure, sure if they mean the Ethereum ledger or if they mean storing a gigabyte of data on Ethereum for a year as a developer or what they're referring to. It says here, BNB chain, price unknown, Solana, about $110,000 per gigabyte, estimated annually via third party, Avalanche, unknown. Internet computer, $5 per gigabyte gigabyte per year completely on chain. Then as far as scalability, Ethereum, improving scalability. This is also why there are so many Ethereum L2s, by the way, because Ethereum is really just a settlement layer and it's not actually that scalable. BNB chain, moderate scalability. Solana, unreliable network and scalability. Avalanche, varied scalability. Internet computer, unlimited scalability. The point is when you can actually actually find information that even bothers to include internet computer, the internet computer metrics tend to be favorable, if not superior. In cryptocurrency speculation or investing, I think that there's really two different things to consider. One, are you looking at technology of tomorrow? Are you looking for long-term hodl? Are you looking to put a lot of money or any amount of money into any crypto in order to just stake it and hold it for a long period of time? Or are you just purely interested in a shorter term play? And I don't mean day trading or buy today, sell next week necessarily, though that is included. I'm really more talking about your typical, let's accumulate, let's wait for the bull run, prices shoot up, let's sell. And then maybe you buy one or more of those cryptos back in the bear market after the price drops 50, 60, 90%, and just rinse and repeat, just do it all over again. The other way to look at it would be, you know, if you could go back in time eight years and buy Ethereum, you could, knowing what you know now, you could buy in low, sell high, wait for it to drop again, buy back in, sell high. You could absolutely do that. The other thing that you could do knowing what you know now is you could go back in time and just buy a thousand, five, ten, twenty thousand 20,000 Ethereum and just sit on it for five years, eight years, you know, quite some time. Wait for it to go to four or $5,000, $10,000, then sell it and just be done. So in the 2024, 2025 bull run, and especially for people that bought in like late 2022, early 2023, and probably for the first half of 2023, purchasing Solana and holding it and even selling now or holding longer into the bull run when Solana probably goes, you know, right past $200 and likely past $300, I would think there's a great deal of hype behind Solana and a lot of marketing behind Solana and a lot of influencers that are very, very bullish on Solana and a very large NFT market and altcoin market. And I, I don't at all argue against the fact that you can make money with Solana and plenty of people have and plenty of people will continue to make money with Solana. I also don't think that Solana is going to go away today, tomorrow, next month, next year. However, when you start talking, what's going to be here five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, do I think Solana in its current form today is going to make it in the long term? Not 
so much, really. And that's one of the big differences between many blockchains, including Solana, versus internet computer. Internet computer can do a whole lot more. It's faster. It's more scalable. It's more secure. You can use on-chain storage. There's on-chain compute. It's just, it's the technology of tomorrow. Now that said, you can still definitely get a 5, 10, 15, maybe a 20 to 30X, depending on your cost basis, out of internet computer in the 2024, 2025 bull run. But there are a lot of other plays that you can make, many of which are going to be far more risky. But there are a lot of other plays that you can make to make much higher multiples than what I think are likely to be offered by internet computer in this current bull cycle, including Solana. Now, can you make more money with Solana, the actual Sol token, from today's prices versus buying internet computer from today's prices? On that note, I tend to think that no, you can't. I Personally, I don't believe Solana is going to go to a, a, like a $600 billion market cap or a trillion dollar market cap in 2024, 2025. It's possible. I just, you know, if it hits like five or $600 billion, if it gets that high, I think that's going to be it. And that that's like a 10x from here. Whereas I think internet computer is probably easily going to 10x from here. So... If I were buying today on May 22nd, 2024, with the intention of selling in 2024 or 2025, and I'm talking about Solana versus internet computer, not the projects within the ecosystem of Solana and internet computer, I would probably have to pick internet computer. And again, if you're talking long-term play, internet computer.